Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Evan Better Presents, and today we're going to be doing a review on Grand Theft Auto V. I don't even know how to start this year. This game is so amazing. So amazing. So, I mean, one of the biggest changes that they've made with this franchise now is the introduction of the three characters. There's Michael, Franklin, and uh, Trevor. And, you know, it's, it's just absolutely brilliant to have these three characters in here. Each of them has a different personality. Each one brings a different flavor to the game. I was really concerned they wouldn't be able to pull this off, but they didn't just pull it off. They pulled it off brilliantly. And it's it's absolutely amazing to have this three-way uh, you know, presentation of the story in the game, and it really does complement it well. Uh, we'll go more into detail about each one of them in a minute, but I mean, first thing I want to say is about Los Santos. Los Santos, I mean, San Andreas, GT, GTA San Andreas was a great game, introduced us to Los, Los Santos. Uh, it was a crazy, awesome environment, and it was one of my favorite, as many people I'm sure remember, Los, uh, San Andreas is one of their favorites as well. It, this was one of my favorite maps in the GTA series, and it doesn't even give it justice to say that they did a better job. This map is phenomenal. I mean, Blaine County and uh, San Andreas and Los Santos, they're just, it's absolutely amazing. The San Andreas is so good, it's so detailed, the city feels alive. I mean, there's people going about their daily actions, they're, they're having fun, they're playing around, they're, you know, just trying to conduct their lives. It has real life, life and warmth to it. I mean, I really feel like it's a, an active thriving city when I'm standing around just on the street corner listening to conversations or watching people go about their business. The detail is is beyond what I ever expected from the smallest thing such as the the fire hydrants. Uh, you know, the, everything is so well detailed. The, the, the detail on the lampposts, uh, mailboxes, every single square centimeter of it looks like a real attention was paid to this place when building it and designing it. It doesn't matter how far off the beaten path you go, you're going to find something that someone spent a lot of time making sure it looked very realistic. You know, it's not just you get away from the main city and all of a sudden everything is a low 8-bit texture because you would have never gone there in the first place. Everything in this city is high detail. You can sneak up into the, the Vinewood Hills and go into some person's backyard and it has, you know, there's a lawnmower, there's uh, horticulture, everything is done. There are water features. It's just brilliant. Um, the city feels huge. I mean, you, st you drive through it, and it really does feel like it's a large area that you're covering. Uh, it's not so um, overwhelming that you get lost in it all the time. I mean, the map's very, very well done, but it really does seem like everything is laid out very brilliantly. It's very enjoyable to spend time in the city. And, I mean, when you get tired of the city, you go outside of the city, you go out to Blaine County, you go out to the desert. It's just, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, it's unbelievable what there is out there. There's just so much to see and do. And, I mean, there's a lot of places that are just flat open land. But even that, even that is fun to just see and take in. I, I took a helicopter out and I flew over the entire map from top to bottom so that I could fill in the, the map, get rid of the fog of war, and... I found myself stopping every couple of minutes and just admiring the detail to the landscape, the detail to the environment, the you know the lakes, the towns, the dirt roads. Um, everything about it is just so well done, and I, I really, really think they've really set the bar, Rockstar, for this is what if you're going to do an open world kind of environment. This is what you have to model it after now. You have to go to this level, and it's going to take you an extra year just to get it this good, but you better do it because nothing is going to live up to this ever again unless they, you know, this is what you have to live up to. You just can't go less than this now. This, the map is just so phenomenal. I really can't say enough about it. I mean, well done. Very, very much so well done. Now let's move back to the characters. You know, we have the character of Michael. He's a retired bank robber. He's, he's trying to trying to get his life in order with his family. He's got a terrible wife, Amanda, and two miserable, stupid, spoiled millennial kids. And it's so funny because I'm sure that, you know, everything's over-exaggerated, but this lifestyle, it just seems so believable for the guy. He, you know, he's, he's an Al Pacino kind of retired gangster who is just trying to have a normal life in the suburbs kind of idea. And, and it's just everything goes to shit in his life and he can't deal with it. And it's, you know, he's going to... He's going to a psychiatrist, and, and the psychiatrist really doesn't give a shit about him. He's just there for the money, and, you know, it's, oh, well, how else do you feel? I mean, he doesn't really have any answers for him. And it's just, it's so believable, and the character is so well-written that you can really kind of relate to it. 
and I find myself really loving the character of Michael. He's so well written, and and it's believable that you know this guy is just trying to go through and get his his life back together. You know, and, and you can see that he values his family, and he doesn't want to get back into this game, but at the same time he misses it because you know he he, he liked that lifestyle. It's just he's a really great character to play, and uh, fin- the story he could hold the story himself just by himself. But of course, there's also Franklin, the the uh, up and coming, you know, black man in the story wants to get out of the hood, wants to friggin' get something better with his life than just being a gangbanger and, and hustling drugs in the in the ghettos. He doesn't want that lifestyle. He wants to have something more, do something better for himself. And he sees kind of Michael as a mentor, you know, and he's he's his protege and he's trying to get a better life out of this. And it's just it's so good to see that perspective there because you're not it allows you to see it from the other side. Basically, Michael's got all this money and he's got all this experience. And frankly, he doesn't have any experience. He doesn't have any money, and he sees everything as a big opportunity. Whereas Michael sees it as all the consequences of these actions. Where Franklin sees it as an opportunity. It's it's a really nice counterbalance that the the two of them have going on, and it it really does add a younger perspective to the scenarios. You know, he, he's not seeing it at the same way that uh, the older guys, Michael and Trevor, are seeing it. So he, it's really fun to watch him and have his, you know, his idiot friend Lamar along and the trouble that he gets into. And then there's Trevor. And I got to say, Trevor, Trevor is by far my favorite character. He's, it's not just because of the fact that he's a crazy psychopath and he doesn't hold back. And he's the character in the, in the story that allows you to do all that crazy shit that really doesn't fit the other two. <clears throat> like going on driving rampages and gunning down everybody in an entire place, blowing everything up. It all fits well into his kind of character. Mike, or Michael and Trevor have a have kind of a, an opposite there. Michael doesn't want to get into the into the violence, and Trevor is all about the violence. He doesn't care. Um, you know, Franklin at the same time is kind of shocked by the craziness that that Trevor does, but at the same time, kind of wants to understand how Michael does things too. But I get back to Trevor. He's just so well written. He's my absolute favorite character. He's intelligent, but comes across in in a crazy kind of manner. He's funny, you know. He's he's likable and hateable at the same time. And and some of the parts of the game where he goes on the rampages because of his Canadian accent, just as a Canadian, it makes me laugh. It just makes me laugh so hard. It's he's so funny. But anyway, he he ties it all together. And you ask me because he keeps that action-packed, dumb decision, you know, crazy bullshit level going really, really high, and it's freaking funny to watch him just screw everything up that Michael has put in place. Really, really fun character to play. Absolutely, super well written as well. And uh, I mean, out of the three, I like I said I think he's my favorite. Now let's focus on what the the main part of the game is in the title. Grand Theft Auto, and the cars that they've added to this game, <clears throat> I mean, it's just unbelievable the number the number of cars that are in this game. You've got everything, and I'm not going to count like airplanes and, and boats, because that's a whole new story, but ba- ba- everything from basic bicycles, through motorbikes, through police bikes, through, you know, crotch rockets, and then you get into the cars, and you have everything from crappy, like, Cuban-looking era, Missile Crisis era, 1960 crappy-looking, you know, old Cadillacs and stuff like that, to, to really, really modern things, like they have, a, they have a Tesla, a Tesla, you know, model basically in the car, it's called the Coil, even that caught me off guard, it's a sports car, and it's an electric sports car, and I never expected that to be in the game, and I, I jacked one by accident, I was like, holy shit, the Tesla. And that blew my mind. So there's hybrids. I mean, the sports cars, there are, you know, you have the Bullet and the Banshee are back, of course. But now they come in in nicer, more updated, modern-looking models. You know, you have everything from your Porsches to your your Audis, your Lexuses, you know, your Fords, your Volkswagen ripoffs. They're all in the game. And it's so varied and so widespread that you find yourself looking around and saying, this seems like it could be an actual amount of cars that are on the street in a real city. Like you have in the downtown core, you have the more rich, luxurious cars. And up in the desert, you've got people driving around crummy, you know, uh, Fords and, and, and beaters and stuff like that because they're just, they don't have the money the city has. It's really, really well done. In the, in the ghetto area where Franklin lives, you know, you find a lot of like El Caminos and, and big old like Cadillacs 
stuff like that, Lincolns, huge Lincolns and things like that, that you'd, you know, it's more stereotype of, of kind of like a, a gang area or whatever like that, but it's, it's still, it kind of fits. Each part of the city has a different set of cars that you can find. You know, in the, the hipster areas is where you're going to find these electric cars and all the hybrids and the, you know, the Fiat 500s and the, the minis and stuff like that. So it's all really well laid out. The, the amount of cars that are in it are just so varied. Um, and it's really, really great to see that they are still focusing on the main part of the title of the, na of the game, which is Grand Theft Auto, by making sure that there's still a very wide variety of cars in this game. Now, let's get on to the missions. And I'm not going to give away too many spoilers here, but so far I've, I've about 50% through the game, according to the in-game stats tracker. And I've come across some missions that have been super, super enjoyable. The planning missions in particular, like the jewelry st store heist that you see in the trailer clips, that one there was really fun to do. Um, there's, you know, there's more of these heists throughout the game. You know, there's a whole section where you're basically, each character has their own different set of stories and missions that they can do. Um, you know, Franklin's, a lot of Franklin's missions involve stealing cars because that's his, his kind of thing. Oh yeah, right. Every character has a special ability. You know, um, uh, Trevor's special ability is Rampage, where he goes crazy and can, for while he's in his special ability mode, can like basically take an insane amount of damage while dishing out an insane amount of damage. Um, Franklin has a driving ability that allows him to just kind of slow down time, so you can maneuver between trucks and stuff like that on the freeway going full speed. Really, really awesome, awesome ability. And then Michael's ability is kind of like a middle range. It allows him to to be in a combat situation more effectively. I, I still haven't really figured him out too well as exactly what he's bringing to the table, but it kind of slows things down, gives you, gives you like a combat slow motion ability. It's pretty cool. Um, so, so back to um, the missions. The missions are so varied. Uh, you know, you, at one minute you're, you're rescuing your daughter from a boat and speeding off on a jet ski, and, and the next minute you're flying an airplane and diving under bridges, and the next minute you're in an all-out gun battle with the police. It's just, it's really, really cool. And because there's the three characters, the missions, in some cases, um, they work, be you know, it, it does seem to it work better that this character is doing this particular type of mission, whereas this character is doing a different type of mission. And I find that that is, is really, really well played, that the three characters and their three different styles allow them to have these three varying types of missions, and they all seem to make sense for them. Um, it, it's just really, really exciting. There's also freaks and uh, freaks and geeks or something like that in it. Strangers and strangers and freaks is what it is. It's, it, they're like kind of generic missions, and it's the, it, most of them seem to be involving this guy Barry, who's this you know pro drug guy, and. I, I don't want to give it too much away again, but when the, the characters get stoned with Barry, they all go into these kind of little hallucination mini missions, and just just absolutely brain blowing fun. It's so amazing to do these little things, and the game is just filled with this. Um, there's also little basic random events that happen. You'll be driving down the street, and all of a sudden, the map will flash, and there'll be a blue red dot on your screen. You go over to that blue red dot, and it could be something as simple as somebody's getting hijacked for their motorbike, and you can, you know, get the motorbike back, and then now that person is really grateful of you, and they may come into the story later on. Uh, you know, sometimes women get their purses stolen. You chase down the thief. You have the option to return the purse um, and the money to the person, get a you know a reward, or keep the money, and then you have a large amount of money that you could have you know that you got. So there's all these little things that pop up all over the place. Um, let's talk about the the radio stations. Now the radio stations, they've I, I swear to God, there's more in this game now than there ever has been. It's just so varied. You've got Latino, you've got you know old West Coast hip hop and rap. Uh, you've got you know you've got Oh God! It's just talk. The chatterbox is back. The talk radio with Laszlo. He's back again. Thank God. Fernando's back. If you remember Fernando, he's back. You know they're all back. All the classics are back. And now there's all kinds of new stations. There's a rock station, a pop station. Um, God, I'm not even giving it justice. There's a very large, varying degree of music. And, and even more cool things is when you're traveling from Los Santos up to um, Blaine County, like you know uh, Sandy Grove or whatever like that. Basically, what happens is if you're listening to one radio station, that radio station actually drops out, just like it would in, in real life if you were driving a really long distance away from a from a metropolitan area where that radio station's broadcast. It drops out, and you pick up the local radio station that happens to be playing there. And that that just kind of realism just blows my mind, and I love that. 
Um, that being said, I do find that there's not a particular set of songs that are like the signature songs of the game. Kind of like in GTA 4 Greenskeeper, Vagabond was kind of like the signature song. I haven't really found that signature song yet. I'm sure it's it's in there. I just haven't come across it. Um, some of the pros that this game this game has done. It's just it's it's breathtaking to just watch the sunset uh, across the water. The landscapes are absolutely so detailed, uh, so stunning. You can go so far. You, you go travel in d way up into the middle of nowhere, and you come across hikers going up a mountain. And they've got their backpacks and their walking shoes and their shorts and their walking stick. And at, when nighttime comes, they camp. You know, they put up a tent and they camp out on the mount, mountain. And then the daytime comes, they pack up that and they go walk away again. Uh, it, it, I, I found some hippies on a beach around a, a campfire. And they were just all talking about liberalism and other hippie shit. But, I mean, just to find these random hippies having a bonfire on a beach and drinking booze around a campfire was just so amazing to see this. Uh, these, You know, there's... They've brought a dog. Uh, Chomp is in this thing now. And you can play with Chomp and play fetch with him. And he helps you out in missions. Uh, you know, just these new perspectives that they bring into it. Um, you can go you can go on, on so many varying types of missions. From bounty hunter missions with Trevor. Uh, to, to, you know, car theft with Franklin. Uh, you know, just... It's insane. Insane amount of stuff you can do. The, I haven't even finished all the missions. I'm still trying to get through it all. It's so good. It's so varied. Great amount of missions. Great. I, I know that um, GTA Online is going to bring more to it. Um, some other things that are really good. The, the stock market options. This is really good. You're doing work for this guy, Lester. He, you know, he tells you, oh, I wouldn't want to be invested in such and such a company. You go and do a, a mission, and then all of a sudden, you know, that company's stock falls through the toilet because your actions directly influence the game. You go on a uh, a destruction spree and you destroy 50 cars. Well, the automaker of those cars, his stock hits the toilet. So you know you can you can play the stock market and actually directly influence it and and um, make some money that way. There's properties that you can buy once again. I haven't been able to buy any of them yet. I don't have any money. I I keep getting myself killed. Hospital bills are expensive, and uh, you can buy these properties. These properties will bring you in a weekly income. Uh, the, there's there's food stations all over the place. There's a pier where you can go on rides and a Ferris wheel and a roller coaster. Uh, there's all kinds of boats that you can drive out to the ocean. There's a submarine. You can go scuba diving. There's an uh, You can go underwater. There's an actual world under the ocean with fish and crevasses and plant life and treasure and crashed planes and crashed boats and everything you can imagine is underneath there. It's actually, you could spend a lot of time just going around and trying to discover what you can find in the ocean. And there's a lot. I guarantee you, you're going to come across something every every time you go out. Uh, th there's planes. There's Thank you thank you very much, Rockstar, for bringing back flight. I mean, uh, helicopters, uh, dual prop engine planes, Sikorsky planes, crop duster, jets, all kinds of helicopters. Again, various types of helicopters. It, it really does some justice that they brought the flying back, and this time the map is huge. You can fly from one end to the other in a short amount of time. But that's not the point. It's the fact that you can now explore all of this land. And it's a large map, don't get me wrong. Like, I went out with this helicopter, like I told you, and I, I got rid of the fog of war. But I found so much. There's so much out there. There's little mini-games, again. Um, there's a, You can find all these alien saucer pieces all over the map. There's like 120 of them or something like that. And you can return them to this guy and there's an unlock and I don't know what it is yet. There's all kinds of replay value that you're just going to keep going back to do more and more and more. The uh, the police are harder this time around. I'm finding myself as soon as I get two stars I'm not trying to fight off the police. I'm trying to escape from them because I know that they're going to show up and they're going to kick my ass. Uh, three stars becomes like a, a fight for your survival and it is difficult to survive sometimes. You know, and four and five stars is basically... The only time I've done the four or five stars is I went for um, the good old hospital shootout is back. You can go into the hospital. There's one particular hospital you can go to. I won't give it away because I want you to discover it on your own. There's a mission that kind of reveals it. And uh, you can go into the hospital and you can have a sh pr proper shootout again. And I lasted a long goddamn time. The weapons. Oh my god, the weapons. The... There are so many good weapons. They've changed it up. When you die, you don't lose your guns anymore. You just lose the ammo for those guns. Um, 
there's, you know, you've got your traditional machine gun and submachine gun, uh, a couple different handguns. Um, there's shotguns, a combat shotgun, a sawed-off shotgun. There's two types of assault rifles, two types of sniper rifles, a grenade launcher, a rocket launcher, a uh, baton. There's knife, there's tear gas, there's grenades, there's jerry cans. Jerry cans, you know, they play a role in that you can pour gasoline around something and then make a trail of gasoline like that trail and it goes burning down and explodes and it's really cool to watch and it brings in just another aspect of something that you never thought of doing before. Um, parachuting. You can go parachuting off of skyscrapers and, and out of planes and everything like that. It, there's just so many varying things to do. Um, oh god, I almost forgot the golf and the, the tennis. There are games out there devoted specifically to that genre a golf game that are not as good as the golf game that is in GTA 5 it is that next level it this is this is what golf games like Tiger Woods and shit like that should be basing around this game I found it was more realistic and more enjoyable than I, I playing any of these other golf games that I've played um, <clears throat> the tennis game it's right up there with like Wii Sports Tennis. The only difference is you're not running, you know, back and forth in your living room. It is that fun to play that game. I must have spent two hours playing tennis in this game. And I mean, at the same time, it also builds. It also builds attributes. There's, I forgot again. Attributes are in this game. There are, you know, you can build up strength and stamina and better driving skill, better shooting skill, better um, underwater lung capacity. All of this stuff can be, your character starts off with set mounts, and the more you do a certain thing, the more your stats build up. Stats are a great addition. It basically makes it feel like you're building your character stronger and better than he was when you started him. Um, what else? I, there's just, there's a never-ending spree of great things about this game. It, it gets a solid 10 out of 10 in every possible category. You know, some of the cons, though, I will say, um, body armor feels like a waste of money. I, I find that I'm constantly getting my body armor, and it, you know it's twenty five hundred dollars for the for the big piece of body armor, the good like the top tier one, and I find that it just runs out like you walk and you trip, and half the body armor is gone. I find it's a bit bit of a rip off, and I'm not noticing that it makes any real difference. Uh, airbags and seatbelts. Can we possibly eventually get something like this? I have flown through the windshield by accident because I'm driving along and I clip a fire hydrant or a, another pedestrian car and I go right through that windshield and done you're dead and I've lost so many lives and so much money to this accident I really just kind of want to see an airbag in the car like like not every car obviously is going to have airbags but can I have at least a couple cars that have airbags that would make me feel a little bit better about not flying through the windshield and getting killed so easily uh getting killed easily I'm dying very often, um, police shootouts, I just never seem to survive them at all. Um, it, the police reaction time is so much faster than yours in every situation. Like, you might get into a car accident, you get out of the car, and by the time you're out of the car, there's already five cops out of their car gunning your ass down. Uh, that does kind of kind of suck, but I think that's more like, you know, it's they're trying to be realistic or whatever that... It's fun, but it's not fun at the same time because this is a video game, it's not real life, you don't want it to be 100% like that. I'd like a little bit more survivability. That being said, when you are critically injured, your life does automatically regenerate to 50% after a set amount of time. It gives you a chance to you know, recover without having to try and find uh, some food or drink or a health pack somewhere. Um, I don't know. It, it, not enough missions, not enough things to do. I find myself kind of getting bored of just going around the city on my own. Um, you know, There's movie theaters to go to. There's tennis. There's golf. But I find like there's nothing, nothing really to do besides just the basic missions. If you want to stay busy, try and make some money. I would like to make some more money on the side. Uh, maybe something basic like there, you can go for races. There's triathlons. There's stuff like that. But I just kind of want to do like maybe I haven't gotten those missions that, that unlock these abilities. I, I don't know. We'll see. I, I just feel like there's there's a shit ton to do. But at the same time, I'm finding myself not doing everything. I don't want to advance the main storyline sometimes, you know. Sometimes I want to get stuck where I am and just keep doing a certain thing. Um, it's it's really good. I, I'm going to say this is this is a plus. I, I thought this was this was about time they added this here, but at the same time, I think it's going to it's going to negatively impact them and it might just be their next viral outrage campaign, but the nudity of the strippers when you're getting lap dances. Now, I find this more realistic. Obviously, you're at a strip club, you're getting a lap dance. There should be some nudity. At the same time, this does strike me as a bit of a shock value on, on Rockstar's part, the next 
controversy that they, you know, hot coffee controversy they're strumming up. I think that's going to hit them in the ass. Uh, negative publicity for that is going to be kind of like not so good. But again, I think that's kind of something they did on purpose. I'm not really objecting to the nudity. I just think they kind of put it in there just for shock value. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have heard about the torture mission. Well, you literally have to torture a guy, um, waterboard and electrocute and that kind of stuff. If you, you know, it's it's it did catch me a little bit off guard. I thought it was kind of a little extreme. Um, I again, shock value. I'm sure that's the reason they're putting it in there. Um, certain things like that are kind of I don't know. It's it's it is a mature rated game, so I'm not really going to be a hypocrite and say this shouldn't be in the game. But at the same time, it was a little bit shock value that I I wasn't expecting. Um, relationships. I'm finding it. I'd like. I'd like to be able to build up a stronger relationship between a couple of characters. Like, say, I want to be able to rekindle Trevor and Michael's, uh, you know, past, and I want to make them best friends again. You know, they are supposed to be like kind of good friends in this game, but I do feel like I'd love to have the ability, the freedom, maybe, to actually make that happen, versus what the game is kind of forcing on me, the situations. Now, you can go hang out with them, just like you could in GTA 4. You can go out to bars and go play darts. You can go watch a movie. You can do all kinds of stuff, you know, and I think that's really cool, and I love those additions because it just adds a little bit more to the environment. The um, But overall, you know, there's really... These are all superficial things. They're not detractors from the game in any way, and it's more my own personal opinion. I, I don't really think it, it detracts from the game one bit. Uh, this game is a 10 out of 10 in every aspect. The sounds, the environment, the missions, the characters, the triple characters is is brilliant. It's so good to have this. I was I was afraid of it at first. I thought they couldn't pull it off. They pulled it off so brilliantly. The story is great. The action is great. The pace of the game is really, really fun. Um, there's just so many good things about this game. If you don't have it, pick it up. You're going to lose hours of your life to this game. It's just so enjoyable, and it's so amazing. And I don't know what else to say. This game is a 10 out of 10. There is nothing bad about it. it it's so amazing. You'd almost think this is on a PS4. You know, like, the PS3 is at its absolute most brilliant graphically looking I've, I've ever seen it. This game, you know, every once in a while there's some frame, frame rate lag when you're driving around too fast. It doesn't matter, though. It happens so rarely. It's just brilliant. This game is so brilliant in every possible way. And I think it's in it's in the top two for game of the year. Absolutely. Behind The Last of Us. Um, or maybe in front of The Last of Us. Either way, those two games, best games of the year, hands down. And they deserve to win something. Anyway, I don't really know what to tell you. Go buy this game. Don't, don't wait. Buy it now. You know, uh, girlfriends, buy it for your boyfriend if he doesn't have it already. You'll have fun too. This thing is amazing. There's so much to do. It, it just It's endless amounts of replay value and I'm going to sink hundreds of hours into it more than I've already put into it now. And I, I just got to say, 10 out of 10, gold award, A+, plus, whatever you want to say. Best game I've played in a very long time. Best GTA game I've ever played. So, you know, thank you very much, guys. And I'll see you all in the next episode.